back. So for today's video, I decided that I want to take a bit of a trip down memory lane and go to a website that I used to go to back in 2012 and 2014 when I first started being interested in politics and elections, and that is the Sabato's Crystal Ball website. Now, Sabato's Crystal Ball, if you're unfamiliar, is a website run by the University of Virginia Center for Politics. It's been around since the 2002 elections, and the editor-in-chief is Larry J. Sabato. And basically, for every election, uh, for every presidential year, midterm year, they post um, kind of analysis charts or like the maps, like the electoral maps that I do, where it shows toss of states and safe, solid, likely all those. And this is one of the earliest sources and memories I have of checking these maps and seeing how do they have states listed as likely, safe, etc. So I really wanted to uh, check out this website because it's been a decent while since I've checked it out. And I know I used to go here all the time and even some of my earliest videos in the channel I used to visit this site. So I decided I want to take a look at what they have listed out for the 2024 election and I'm going to compare it using uh, my own and kind of the memory of my own uh, battleground maps and stuff and kind of see if we agree and where we differ and such. So with that said, the first one I'm looking at is the 2024 Electoral College. This is obviously the presidential election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. So the Sabo's crystal ball right now has Republicans at 251 uh, electoral votes when you add up the safe states, likely states, and lean states for the Republicans. And by Republicans, of course, that's most likely going to be Donald Trump. For the Democrats, safe, likely, and Democrat adds up to about 226. And of course, this will likely be Joe Biden, potentially Kamala Harris, but likely Joe Biden. So what does this map say? Well, for one thing, I'm not going to fight them on any of the safe Democratic states or safe Republican states, really. Every single one of these safe Democratic states and safe Republican states and my own personal map, I would have the exact same way. So no disagreement there. I do find it a little interesting, though, is the likely states, they have Florida and Texas and likely. And I've gone back and forth on this myself a few times. I have Texas and Florida on my own personal map in the safe column, which for me, safe is anything where the candidate wins by 11 points or more. It's a uh, tilt is under like 1%. Lean is like 2 to like 5%. Likely is that 5 to 10 range. And then anything above 11 is safe for me, for my personal scale. So I personally would have safe uh, for Texas and Florida. Cause I honestly think Trump wins Texas probably by about that 11 point range on the dot. Definitely on the lower end of the safe side. I don't think Trump's going to win Texas by like 20 points or anything. But I think about like 11 points or so is pretty fair. Florida, I'm not so sure. Florida, I feel more confident having as a state as a safe state for Trump. A lot of times it seems that in polling in the presidential year that Florida will be a lot closer in the polls than the results are on election day. For instance, I believe Clinton was leading Trump in Florida in 2016 and Trump obviously won it. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Biden was leading Florida in the polls on election day for Trump as well, or at least for a long time. And Trump ended up doing very well in 2020. And then DeSantis' election in 2022, where he won the state by about 20 points. So I don't know. It's seeing the map where Ohio and Iowa are safe Republican states now and how fast they've trended to the right. I, I kind of have a little bit of a hard time saying Florida, at very least, is not a safe Republican state. But that's nitpicky things because they both give them to the Republican side, and I'm in total agreement with them on that. On the Democratic side, uh, I'm not really going to disagree with New Mexico being likely or Maine being likely. I'm with that 100%. Virginia, I'm a little bit more skeptical just because they haven't done a ton of polling yet. But, you know, Trump is making a considered effort to go after that state. He did a rally with Governor Yunkin a few weeks ago. So I'm kind of interested to see where Virginia ends up being margins-wise on the election. I don't think Trump's going to win it, but I could see it falling into the lean Democratic column and instead of the likely column. But that, again, that could be a margin of like one or two point different between likely and lean. But I would just put Virginia maybe in lean, but likely is certainly understandable. And now for the lean states. This is actually interesting to me. They put Georgia and North Carolina both in the lean Republican column. In the column. 
So for my last two videos, I've had North Carolina and lean Republican. I completely agree with this. Uh, Virginia, I've you know I've become or not Virginia, excuse me, Georgia. I've come close to putting Georgia in the lean Republican column, and I may even start doing that. I just was being a little bit more cautious because I did vote for Biden last time, and the polls for Trump and Georgia have been very well. There's no denying that. I just I kind of want to see a few more polls come out with a little bit more consistency that show. This isn't just like a early poll lead type thing. Like Trump is actually leading in Georgia by five or six or seven points. At that point, I would feel pretty confident putting Trump ahead or putting him in the lean column for Georgia. But I I respect them putting Georgia and North Carolina in lean because I certainly am pretty much in a full agreement with that. And then the lean Democratic states, only two, but there is the congressional district in Nebraska, Nebraska's second district. They have that as lean Democrat. And that's actually closer to being a toss-up than I thought. I would have put it in likely Democrat. At least that's what I've been doing. So seeing Nebraska second in lead Democrat is very interesting and something I might need to keep more of an eye on and see if any more polls come out because I did not have that as lean. I had that as likely. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep more of an eye on that one. Minnesota and New Hampshire. Uh, this does not surprise me one bit that they have in the lean Democrat. I mean, if you watched any of my prior videos, I just did one on Minnesota and New Hampshire in the last week or so. These states are two states that the Trump campaign, at the very least, is putting on watch, looking for more polling, seeing if they have a realistic shot at winning these states. This is something where, kind of in 2016, where if Trump did very well, he ended up winning Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, maybe the thought process is if Trump does really well on election night, that you may be able to sneak out a victory in Minnesota than New Hampshire. Again, I don't feel totally confident putting these in lean just yet, just because, I mean, these two states do have a long history of voting for Democrats. I don't think Minnesota has voted for a Republican. I know for a fact Minnesota has not voted for a Republican in the 2000s, and New Hampshire voted for Bush, I believe, in 2000 and then voted Democrat every election since. So I'm not totally confident putting those two states in lean Democrat for now. I would put them in likely Democrat with Virginia and New Mexico, but nonetheless, very interesting. And then the toss-up states, completely no disagreement on this for me. This is what I've been saying the last few videos as well. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Nevada, these five states are going to decide the election. I'm in complete agreement on that. I had Georgia in there as well. But that could just be a case of me being a little bit more cautious and waiting for more polls to come out. But I'm, uh, I'm in 100% agreement with them that these five states are very, very important and will decide who the next president of the United States is. So that's the Electoral College rankings for as of July 3rd, by the way. They update it, I think it's every month or so or relatively frequently, but they update it July 3rd. Uh, post debate, so a lot of the like post debate polls have kicked in, and Biden approval polls have kicked in. So Trump is sitting at 251, Biden at 226, and it's going to be something to watch. I'm interested to see how this map develops, and I'll be going over some of the rating changes at the end of the video as well. That um, the site is very good, and they publish when they make changes to the electoral map. They talk about what they did change and kind of where and how and such. So I'll be covering that as well. On to the Senate map. This is The Senate is something I haven't talked about this cycle too, too much, but I am going to be talking about more in future videos in the not too near or not too distant future. But this was last updated June 13th, so not as frequently as the Presidential Electoral College, but still relatively pretty frequently. It currently has the map at 50 Republicans once you do all the safe, likely, or leans, and 48 Democrats. So, and another good thing about the Senate race, I just want, or the Senate map, they actually have the current composition of the Senate right now where they show you, like, for instance, Kirsten Sinema in Arizona is an independent who I believe is retiring. So that is currently an independent, but obviously she's not running again, so she's not going to win it. So a lean Democrat would actually be, even though her part, even though she was a Democrat that became a independent, technically the Democrats would still be retaining that seat. But it shows you this map what the ratings are, and this map shows you who currently holds the seat. Red Republicans, uh, blue Democrats, and green independents. So, just looking at this map, um, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting map, and I totally agree. I'll do the, again, safes, and then I'll go down from safe down to lean and toss up and such. Uh, the safe Democratic states, I don't see any issue here. So, Tim Kaine is up for re-election in Virginia, and he... 
I mean, I really don't see this race being too contested, to be honest. It's just, it's weird to imagine the presidential race being rated as, like, likely Democrat, but the Senate race being safe Democrat. It's just, I don't know if vote splitting too often is going to make that happen. I would probably put Virginia and likely Democrat, but I do think it goes Democrat nonetheless. Otherwise, the rest of the safe Democratic states I'm in complete agreement with. Safe Republican states, uh, yeah, I don't really have much of an argument here either. It's uh, These are all states that I think are definitely going to be safe Republican. I also want to do a very interesting note. When I created my channel, the first election that I was following was the 2018 election. So this Senate map is actually the same Senate map that it was in 2018. So it's this is the first time the Senate's come full circle since I had my channel be a thing. So it's funny, back then, uh, Democrat Claire McCaskill was a senator from Missouri running for re-election against Josh Hawley. So this was considered a toss-up or lean Republican. Indiana at the time was considered a toss-up to lean Republican. Phil Bredesen was running in Tennessee that was making it like a lean Republican state. So it was really contested. North Dakota, there was Heidi Heitkamp, the Democratic senator. So it's weird seeing these states be solid Republican now, but What's not too different is Montana and Ohio are still toss-ups or like competitive as they were back in 2018. And I mean, I completely agree with this. It all depends because I think Trump is going to win Ohio and Montana, no question. It all depends on can the Republican Senate candidates who are going up against Democratic incumbents who are both polling actually pretty well approved of wise. It's interesting to see if those Republican challengers who Trump, I believe, endorsed both of them if they will be able to make up the margins and kind of go off of Trump's victory and get enough votes to beat the incumbents. It'll be an interesting, interesting thing to watch. If that does happen, Republicans would get up to 52 seats, Democrats 48 seats, and Republicans would actually flip control of the Senate back to the Republicans. However, though, it's not easier said than done because these are two incumbents who have both been polling actually pretty well. And now looking at there are no lean Republican seats, by the way. That's why I kind of just skipped over that. But looking at the lean Democratic seats, every single one of these lean Democratic seats are all Democratic incumbents. And it's similar to the Electoral College map. Let me just show you real quick. Look at the toss-up states that I think are the most important toss-up states in the election. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona. Every single one of these toss-up states has a lean Democrat or a Democratic incumbent up for re-election where it's listed as lean. In, in my past few videos, I've gone over the polls in some of these uh, places, like Arizona, for instance. It's an open seat, but the Democrat Gallego is pulling ahead of Cary Lake by like four or five points. Nevada Senator Catherine Cortez Masto is leading the Republican Sam Brown by at least five points in most polls, if not more. Wisconsin, I don't think I've seen much polling yet out of this state. I know it's Tammy Baldwin versus Eric Havda, I believe it's pronounced. I haven't seen much polling out of Wisconsin yet, so I'm going to need to check more. Michigan, I believe I believe that state. I don't. I can't think of any polls off the top of my head, but I know it's under. It's five points, or maybe a little bit under. But I know the Democratic incumbent here is definitely leaning. In Pennsylvania, this is Bob Casey versus Dave McCormick. I know that the polls have been actually getting closer in this one, and that's one of the rating changes that uh, the Crystal Ball did make. But this is a state that I think also is very, very close. And I'm very, I'm fascinated to watch how the Senate goes. Because if Trump wins every single one of these toss-up states, just hypothetically, I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying if he did do that. I'm interested to see, would Trump really win all these toss-up states, but the Senate all go to the Democratic incumbents? How, like, I, don't, I can't imagine there are too many Donald Trump shared Brown voters in Ohio or Donald Trump, Catherine Cortez Masto voters in Nevada. It's just a weird thing to think about, but definitely something to keep an eye on. But I don't disagree with this map so far, to be honest. Like the toss up states, I think, are very fair. And in all the lean Democratic states, all the polling suggests the Democrats' incumbents are all leading in those states right now. And the Republican candidates, most of them are polling in the low 40s because perhaps their name recognition isn't high or they're first time candidates who just won the primary. Like, there could be multiple reasons why, but the Democrats are certainly pulling ahead here. And I don't disagree with this map one bit. Now onto the governor's uh, rankings, gubernatorial. These ones I'm going to go wrong pretty quickly because there really isn't too, too much to talk about. Uh, all the safe Republican states I agree with. Uh, was, uh, Washington state is likely Democrat. I agree with that one. I have no doubt that's going to stay in the Democratic side. Delaware safe Democrat. 
the two governor's races I'm watching this cycle that are the most uh, contested are North Carolina and New Hampshire. And I am complete agreement that these are pure toss-ups for both of them. North Carolina. So it is Republican Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson who is running against a Democrat or who is um, – they're both – it's an open seat, by the way, because North Carolina's Democratic Governor Roy Cooper is term limited. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Roy, or Mark Robinson, the Republican, is running against Democratic candidate Josh Stein. And this is going to be an extremely close election. The polls have definitely gone back and forth on this one where it looked like Stein was up by at least like four or five points early on. And now it's down. He's up by one or two points. Maybe there's a few polls here and there that show Robinson winning. This day is going to go down to the wire. And in New Hampshire, uh, Republican Governor Chris Sununu is not running for re-election. So there is an open seat in New Hampshire, which is the re- part of the reason it's in toss-up. Uh, the candidates right now, the leading candidates to become the nominees on the Republican side is former New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayotte, who nearly lost her election in 2016 to Maggie Hassan by under 1,000 votes. She's running for governor this time, and she's the leading Republican candidate right now to win the Republican primary. Uh, Chuck Morse, who ran for Senate, the Republican primary in Senate uh, two years ago and lost to Don Bulldog by about, honestly, under 1,000 votes in that as well, is also running against Ayotte. But so far, the polls seem to suggest that Ayotte is the leading favorite in that Republican primary. And then for the Democrats... In New Hampshire, their top contender right now is the mayor of Manchester, or former mayor of Manchester, excuse me, Joyce Craig, where if those two are the matchup, I would I would personally put this race in the lean Republican column. I think Ayotte would be able to win this uh, race. Governor Sunu is polling very, very well in terms of approval ratings, and I think Ayotte's name recognition gives her a leg up over Craig. So I would move that to lean R, but leaving it as toss-up until the primary is over, I completely agree with. And the New Hampshire primary is very, very late. I believe it's either, I think it's late August, the primary is over by August or September. So I think it might be even early September. So I completely agree with having New Hampshire, North Carolina, and toss up. But nonetheless, I would move New Hampshire to lean R once the primary is settled. I'm also going to go over the 2024 House ratings very, very briefly. I'm not going to talk about too many of them because there are a lot, and this would honestly take forever. So I'm just going to go over the toss-ups for both. Um, Arizona 6, Arizona's 1st, California's 13th, California 27, California 22, Nebraska 2nd, New York 17, New York 19, and Oregon 5 are all Republican uh, seats that are held by a Republican that are toss-ups. And I'm, if you want to do more research about these, you can. I'm, I haven't decided if I'm going to go over the House races yet, just because there are so many of them on future videos, but I could potentially do this at a later date, but I'm just going to show you them on the screen now. The Democratic toss-ups are states where the Democrats are having a toss-up election, but the incumbent is running, I believe, or it'll say open if not. Uh, California 47C open, Porter's not running. Jared Golden, I mentioned in my main video yesterday. Uh, Michigan 7 with Slotkin, she is the Democratic nominee for Senate in Michigan. Uh, Michigan 8 is an open seat. Don Davis, North Carolina 1, Ohio 13, Pennsylvania 8, Pennsylvania 7, and Washington 3. So again, if you want to do more uh, research on these or look more into these, by all means, of course, I'll leave this in the video so you to look at, but I'm not going to go over all of them now because that would take a very long time. So those are the house ratings. So the last thing I'm going to do in this video really quick is just show you the rating changes that the Sabado Crystal Ball... Uh, team have made over the last uh, few weeks and so. So the first one of the, ra- the latest electoral map I mentioned, they had Michigan rated as lean Democrat and they moved to the toss up. And I definitely agree with this. I mean, I've at times put Michigan in lean D or till D as well. So given the polling and Biden's debate performance, I 100% agree with moving Michigan to toss up. No denying that. Minnesota going from likely Democrat to lean Democrat. You know, this one I'm I agree, but I don't feel as strongly about because I still think on Election Day, Minnesota and New Hampshire could both end up being likely Democratic states, but I definitely don't disagree with putting it in lean Democratic for now, but it'll be interesting. It'll be one to keep an eye on. In the last update they made on June 13th, they had Alaska is likely Republican, which a lot of the polling actually suggests that uh, uh, Alaska's numbers are not as big for Trump as some other Republican states, but they moved to the state Republican, which I agree so they moved Georgia from toss-up to lean Republican in June 13th. Um, 
Yeah, again, I've already given my thoughts on this, so I'm not going to rehash all of them, but I definitely don't disagree. I'm just being a little bit more cautious and a little more careful on it. Iowa from likely Republican to safe, I 100% agree with that. Main second district from lean Republican to likely, I completely agree with that, no doubt in my mind. I I feel confident putting Maine's second district as safe Republican, but I definitely agree with this. Ohio from likely to safe Republican, I 100% agree. And Pennsylvania from lean Democrat to toss-up. I completely agree with this as well. Pennsylvania is going to be one of the closest toss-up states in the country. Probably decided by under one to two points again. So I 100% agree with this. And the Senate changes, there haven't been all too many, to be honest. And June 13th, Bob Casey moved from likely Democrat to lean Democrat. Uh, this is one, yeah, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. I thought for sure Casey was a shoo in for re-election. His approval ratings are doing very, are doing very well. But given... Um, how President Biden performs in November, if he has a very bad night, that may potentially drag Casey down a bit, which may give the Republican Dave McCormick a shot at defeating Bob Casey. So I don't disagree with this ruling, knocking it down the leans Democrat one bit. In Arizona, when uh, Kirsten Cinema, the open seat is shifted to lean Democrat. I believe this is around the time when Cinema announced she was not going to run for re-election. And, um, yeah, right now, I don't disagree with this. I mean, the polling all suggests that Gallego is leading over Lake by about four to five points, so I completely agree with this. February 9th, Maryland going from safe Democrat to likely Democrat. This is when Larry Hogan announced he was running, and there were a few polls showing him polling pretty well in the race. I definitely don't disagree with this as well. I don't see this race going red, but I at very least definitely see it being likely Democrat instead of safe. And West Virginia, this is from back in November. This is when Manchin announced he was not going to run again. Leans Republican if Manchin was running. Yeah, I agree with that. And then it shifted to safe when he's not running. No questions there. Governor's races. Uh, back or in June 4th, Phil Scott in Vermont announced he was running for re-election. And so the race shifts back to safe Republican. It, he's not going to lose this seat. He's, a poll, he's approved of very well. July 19th, 2023, Governor Sununu in New Hampshire announced he's not running. Open seat, immediately shifts to toss-up, no complaints there. Washington, safe to, de- safe to likely Democrat back in July of 2023. Again, not too much to say about this because I think both of these states, or this state will definitely go blue, so I'm not going to fight that one. Tate Reeves in Mississippi, safe Republican to likely Republican. Mississippi's governor elections are always going to be closer than like you would think they would be, so again, I'm not going to, no disagreements there. And the House ones, I'm not going to go over. I'm just going to show them on the screen as well. Just so if you want to get a look at them, you absolutely can. So that is going to do it for my video today. I just want to do a quick kind of overview of the Electoral College, the Governor's Map, the Senate Map. Because this is a site that I highly recommend you using. If you want to use it, just Google uh, Sabato Crystal Ball and this will come up. It's a site that I think is a really great tool and a really great resource if you want to learn more about... Um, our election system, especially the Electoral College, has been very helpful uh, for me to use for that. And it's just, it's something that I've been using a long time and I really like. And it's a, just a great resource. So I highly encourage you to check it out. So that's going to do it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in a future video.